Hey, welcome back to my channel everyone. So a lot of you guys who saw my DIY fireplace video um, had questions on how I built the mantle for it. I didn't really show it in my fireplace video and I'm sorry for that. Um, but that just gives me another opportunity to make another video and show you guys how uh, I built the mantle. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I didn't purchase it, I DIY'd it and it was very simple. And you guys will see how simple it is whenever I show you. Um, so first what I'll do is I'll go over the tools that you need. Uh, for this project and also the material that you'll need for this project. I just bought the material today to build another mantle and total it was like 25 bucks uh, at Home Depot so super cheap uh, mantle and uh, super easy and it just looks uh, really good and it's super sturdy um, whenever you have it hung up so um, yeah let's go over the uh, tools parts materials that we need um, and then we'll get started with our with our DIY. So a couple of the tools that I'll be using today uh, one is going to be the circular saw Always got to use the True 90 and we'll be using a, a miter saw and a nail gun and then I've got some extra nails for my nail gun and this original wood glue from Type Bond. So the type of nails that I got were 16 gauge straight finish nails. I'm sure you can use different nails. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not very familiar with all the different types of nail gun nails but I use this for pretty much everything and it, and it works um, just fine. It's worked for my fireplace. and. Uh, the mantle's held up for about a year now uh, with no no problems at all so uh, that worked well for me um, and then of course uh, you, you guys can get whatever stain you want there's uh, you know dark walnut or walnut or ebony or whatever you want to do um, and then something that I don't have here um, that I didn't do to my fireplace but I've seen a lot of other people do to their uh, DIY mantle is just uh, have a hammer that way you can just kind of rough it up a little couple dings here dings there just to kind of make it look rough so yeah that's all that's all you need so for the material for the wood I bought one uh, one by six common wood slab and then uh, two one by eight six foot common common board and that's all you need all right so now that you guys know what tools parts and materials you need um, let's get uh, started on this DIY all right so the first thing you guys are gonna want to do is just measure out your pieces measure what you're gonna cut um, so what I did was I measured my fireplace. Uh, my fireplace is roughly six and a half feet uh, in width and so I want my mantle to be about six inches in uh, from both sides so about a foot in and so that's how I'm going to measure my board. So I'll measure this board at about five and a half. Um, so the, the front piece of the mantle is going to be the one by six um, and then also the two side pieces of the mantle is going to be the one by six. So, so we're going to cut one five and a half feet one by six board. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is just measure out your pieces. Um, I came up with the measurements for my mantle to be about five and a half feet. Uh, my fireplace uh, total width is about six and a half feet, so I want it to be about six inches in on either side, so subtract a foot, that's five and a half feet. So the first thing we're going to do is mark the one by six board to five and a half feet. Once you've marked your five and a half feet, you want to take your true 90 um, and then uh, that way you have a straight line to go off of and you'll line up the true 90 to the two marks that you made at five and a half feet uh, and just give it a straight, a straight line. That way you know where to cut. If you guys see, uh, I'm using all Ryobi products and it's not because I'm sponsored by them or anything. I'm not getting paid to show you guys these tools. I just truly, genuinely... Um, love Ryobi it's good it's affordable and uh, and they're good quality too they haven't let me down at all pretty much every power tool I have is Ryobi and uh, the thing that I like about Ryobi is most of these things like the uh, the nail gun all of them uh, take a, a the same uh, it's like a universal battery for Ryobi products um, and so I'm able to switch swap this out with my circular saw with my drill pretty much anything uh, that I have Ryobi, but yeah, so let's make this cut. We'll make this five and a half foot cut I'm working inside uh, my basement today. It's pretty rainy outside and I don't have a garage uh, or a canopy of any sort so I've moved my stuff inside, which is okay. I've got my vacuum here and uh, Yeah, so it's the basement my basement's pretty well ventilated All right. 
before you cut anything with your miter, you want to line it up. Um, my miter has a laser on it, but my batteries are out, so my laser doesn't work. So old school, just line it up. Uh, make sure you're cutting on the opposite side um, of the line that you drew. That way you have a nice straight cut and all your measurements are good because you don't want to take the time to measure out your piece of wood and then cut incorrectly and then you measured all that stuff for, for nothing. All right, so now that I have my five and a half foot piece cut, so with these uh, one by eight pieces, this is gonna be the top of my mantle. So for the side pieces, I want them to be just as long as this one by eight. Now you're thinking one by eight, oh, eight inches. So you want it to be eight inches. But if you measure any piece of wood that you go buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, on the price tag, it's gonna say one by eight, but really it's like three quarters by seven and a quarter or seven and a half inches. So they really skimp you. I don't know why they say one by eight when it's truly not one by eight at all. Um, so you want to do your uh, due diligence and go ahead and just measure even though it says one by eight you want to measure it so this comes out to be a little under seven and three eighths so it's in between seven and a fourth and seven three eighths um so one four two eighths so this piece is seven and five sixteenths see what i'm saying it's not it's not exactly eight so you definitely want to measure your your pieces of wood so you can get an ac accurate cut so seven and five sixteenths. All right, so now that I know the length or the width of my one by eight, which is seven and five sixteenths, I can go ahead and cut my, the rest of my one by six pieces of board to uh, seven and five sixteenths in length. All right, once you got that one measured, you wanna take your true 90 and just line it up. Get a good solid line that you can gauge uh, your miter saw with. And again, you're going to want to line it up. And then you'll measure again, 7 and 5 sixteenths, because you want two of these pieces. Take your true 90, line up your miter on the opposite side of the piece that you want. So theoretically, once you've made these cuts, this should be just as wide as your 1x8, which it is. That's what you want it to be. Just as long as your 1x8 is wide. Perfect. And this is scrap wood. I gotta go with my scrap wood pile. Save all your scrap wood because you can make some interesting products like I have on the back of my wall. All the scrap wood that I have on the back of my wall, actually I got from Home Depot for free. Um, if you guys don't know, you can go to Home Depot, maybe Lowe's too, if you go to the wood section. Uh, in the very back where they have their own saw that they can uh, cut your pieces down. Normally they have a bunch of scrap wood that you can um, just go collect for free. So now that we have our 1x6 cut, we'll go ahead and measure out our 1x8 piece board. So our 1x8 piece board, let's see here, 1x6 was 5.5. And, and then you want to measure the two smaller one by sixes that you cut measure the, uh, the the depth of these so this is one and a half inches each one's about three fourths of an inch so one and a half inches so if you take five and a half feet so like 63 inches minus one and a half inch is 61 and a half inches so that's how long you're gonna want both of your uh, one by eights so 61 and a half inches. And I'll tell you guys why that's important here in a little bit. So for this piece, I'm gonna be using my circular saw. And before I cut this, I need to just make sure that this piece is solid. So I'll go ahead and attach a clamp. So whenever you're cutting with your circular saw, you want to go nice and slow. Just make sure it's as straight as possible. And if you have to, you can sand off a little bit after you've made the cut just to make it nice and smooth. But since it's not a miter and you're you're trusting your own uh, trusting your own strength and and uh, steadiness, uh, you want to just make sure you go nice, smooth, and slow.
Alright, so this should be 61 and a half inches. 61 and a half. I understand all you safety gurus are probably just chomping at the bits because I'm not wearing gloves and safety glasses and stuff. I know I should be wearing that, but uh, I'm just kind of too lazy and I like to live life on the edge a little bit. But, uh, but I do suggest that all you folks be as safe as possible when you're doing this stuff. Uh, put on your appropriate PPE, you know, your glasses, your gloves. Especially when you're using the circular saw, it can get kind of dangerous. All right, so we'll measure this piece. This is the second one by eight. Uh, we'll measure 61 and a half like we did the other one. Half. All right, so now that we have all of our pieces cut, we can go ahead and start putting them together. So I'll kind of try to put it together without uh, nailing anything down. So you'll have a one by eight piece on the bottom and then the two small one by six pieces on both ends. And then another one by eight piece on the top, like so. And then your long one by six piece will be on the very front. So I'll start putting everything together. We're gonna have the one of the one by eight pieces on the bottom and then you'll put the one by six pieces, the smaller ones, on both sides of it like this. So it kind of sits on the side of it. Something that uh, will make this easier when it comes to nailing the pieces together, i found, uh, is if you do have a workbench and you're working on a, on a table, what you want to do is take your 1x8 piece and uh, kind of uh, put it off the table a little bit. And then you'll take your 1x6 uh, piece, one of your smaller ones, and just kind of put it on the side like this. Make sure it's flush. All right guys, so let's start putting these pieces together. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your one by eight piece, take a little bit of this wood glue, and put it on the side. Not a whole lot, you don't need a lot. And then you'll put your one by six small piece on the side and kind of make it as flush as possible. You can kind of hold it there for a little bit. Let the glue kind of do some work. And you'll take on your nail gun. You know, one side of it, and then go back and line it up again. Now the other side of it. And you'll flip it over. Do that same process. Sit it up like so on your workbench and squeeze your other one by eight piece in. First put some glue on both sides of your one by eight. have that done you have the majority of the mantle done don't worry about these kind of cracks on the front you're gonna cover that up with your long one by six piece what you do is you flip it over where the opening is facing you 
or the, to where the opening is facing up. And you'll take your one by six, your long one by six, and you'll just line it up so it's nice and flush. This is where your measurements uh, are key because if you don't measure your pieces of wood right and cut them right, then none of this will line up at the end. But if you did do it right, then it should all line up. It all looks good, lines up. So what I'm gonna do is put a thin layer of glue all around the, the, uh, the face. Well, my camera died, so I'm gonna be using my phone. So the last step is just put the one by six on top and then nail gun it in. Um, I'm not gonna hold my phone while I do this, so you guys, uh, I'm sure you understand what to do next, but once you put your one by six on, you see like little gaps right here, it's not gonna matter. Uh, once we start nail gunning it in, we'll press that bit down, nail gun it in, and then, uh, yeah, and then I'll sh show you guys what I, what I do next. So I've nail gun uh, the top piece in, the one by six, the long one. Um, and so next, what I would do, I'm not gonna do it on this one, um, just cause then I'd have to go out and buy more. But, uh, what I did on my mantle is they make this wood fill, this like wood putty. Um, so you'll take that and you'll just fill in these holes where these nail gun marks are with this wood putty. So you can get whatever, uh, kind of color wood putty you want to match, uh, whatever wood you have. Um, so just the original wood putty, I found the color matches this. And if you plan on staining it anyways, once you put that wood putty on there, the wood putty holds the stain, so it'll all uh, kind of look the same color. Um, so after you do this, you can take a hammer and just kind of, you know, make some nicks uh, and, and dings here and there to make it look rough. Um, I didn't do that with mine, but I know a lot of people do it with theirs, and they like that rough kind of fit. Um, something else that you can do is just take your sander and sand, sand uh, the edges before you um, stain it sand all the edges uh, so that they line up uh, and there's no kind of like little little uh, things like this it just kind of is even and flush uh, and then yeah I'll show you guys how to mount this on the fireplace next uh, but yeah here's the, the the mantle all done so whenever we flip this over there's still a hole here and this is how uh, kind of how I'm, I mounted my uh, mantle what I did was I took a two by four two by four fits pretty much perfectly in this. Uh, but I took that two by four and I um, screwed it into my fireplace uh, and I made it made sure it was level. And then I took this mantle, I lifted it up and I put it on the two by four and then screwed it in on the top, just three screws. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Pretty simple, cheap um, and uh, mantle and it, it looks nice. All right guys, so the next step that I did was I uh, took a two by four, just a scrap piece of two by four, um, and then I cut it uh, smaller than the inside of my mantle. It doesn't really necessarily matter how big, I like to I like to do it long just so I can have more support, but I took uh, this two by four, cut it to 58 and a half inches, uh, and then I drilled it straight into my fireplace studs. So as you can see, uh, I, I knew where my studs were because of my uh, nail gun holes. And so I just used that line and I mounted this two by four with two screws on each side. Uh, and then after I mounted the two by four, I'll be able to hang my mantle on it and then screw down. So I'll go ahead and hang my mantle on it. on there and then you want to get your mantle pretty much even on both sides and then you'll just drive down some screws i just use three screws pretty simple you want to create some pilot holes first which is what i did um before i put these screws in so you create pilot holes straight down and then you put these long i use two and a half uh i think actually three inch screws pretty much it uh once you get that down like i said you can stain it but yeah that's pretty much it it's pretty simple uh, once you 
Um, I didn't do it right here, but once you get your screws in, um, you can run some, uh, like I said earlier, some wood putty um, in those holes and just fill it in before you stain it. Fill it in, sand it, and then stain it, and then you won't even won't even notice them. So, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And and uh, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in my in my comment box. Um, uh, be sure to like this video, give, give it a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Again, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in uh, my next video.